Hi, Angie Burns here, standing outside the Isha Theatre in Surrey. And I'm about to go and find out more about a brand new musical called City of Dreams, which is about to take place here in April. And there are many well-known names attached to this new production, including one familiar face and name from both our television and our radio stations. So let's go inside and find out more about this new production. I'm joined by somebody that you might be familiar with, if I say the name Mike Reed. Oh, I'm familiar Mike. with that name, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a wonderful opportunity to sit down and chat to you, Mike, because we have got wind of a brand new musical called City of Dreams, mm -hmm. which I believe and understand you are very much well and truly the backbone of this production. Tell us more, but what, what's City of Dreams about? Well, it's a new musical. Uh, the music is by Eric Coates, who was uh, the king of light classical music. He wrote uh, Knightsbridge March, Design Discs theme, The Dam Busters, uh, calling all workers, workers playtime. He was the king of those radio themes. And my grandfather loved his music, and, and thus so did I. And I had a double CD and I was going between the breakfast show. And at the time I, I do a lot of audio books. I was doing a lot of Shakespeare. And to free my mind from the breakfast show to get to Shakespeare and coming back the other way, uh, I was listening to Eric Coates and I suddenly started putting words to one. I thought, that's weird, that works really well. And then I couldn't wait to get back and work on it. And over six weeks, every spare moment, I worked on it, put together the basis uh, of the book, i.e. the script and the songs, and they, they kind of worked. And I thought, wow. And then I discovered later that the British media in the late 30s, early 40s had been encouraging him mm -hmm. uh, to write music for the stage. They, they kind of said, you're the new Richard Rogers, you're our Richard Rogers. You know, you've got to find yourself a Lorenz Hart or an Oscar Hammerstein, uh, get some lyrics. You've got to write musicals for the stage. That, that's clearly your forte. He never did. Um, so all these years on, for a uh, man who died in 1957, uh, 2023 is his first stage musical. So I thought I'd try and put something together uh, as a storyline. It's always very difficult getting a storyline. Hammerstein always said that. He said, the thing that gets criticized is the book. People go, oh, what lovely songs, what lovely songs, what a boring old book. Um, and normally they'd take it, it'd be based on something or other, you know, uh, like Rod Stewart's was Faust, you know, where you sell, yes, yes. sell your soul for, to be Rod Stewart for two weeks and things like that. So, and, and, um, and the Meatloaf musical is the kind of, you know, West Side Story. Yes. It's the, the daughter of, of the rich magnate falls for the leader of the street gang. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, I tried to find a story. And then I thought, um, I was thinking of Shakespeare stuff, and I thought, oh, Midsummer Night's Dream, because I was reading that at the time with this audio book, and I thought, oh, I, mean, I won't center it around Midsummer Night's Dream, but maybe I'll set it on Midsummer Night in Piccadilly Circus, right. Right. Um, 1932, and, and go from there. So it's so a pre-war, um, and tell us about some of the characters that are in this musical then. Have we got a bit of romance? Have we got tragedy? <laughs> Yeah, it's, in a way, it's a little bit like a soap. Um, the two club owners, uh, named after Oberon and Titania, the king and queen of the fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, their clubs are Obies and Titties. Uh, and they, you know, they have their clientele probably stay after hours. They get raided now and again. Drinks are expensive. Some of the girls take their tops off. We don't see that. Um, <laughs> and uh, so they're always having a bit of a snipe at each other, rivals. Uh, there's a flower seller, young flower seller, because there's always a flower seller in Piccadilly yes. Circus, and a young newsboy. There, there's a sort of a young romance. Uh, two other people who see each other, as you, you know, that you may have done this, I think we've all done this, where you see somebody, you think, oh, who's that? There's something about them that you quite like, uh, and you flirt with each other, but sometimes you can't do anything about it. One of them's married or something, you think, no, 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 it, it can't be, but something about you that is interesting and they circle around each other for a lot of the time uh, and we'll see where it goes um, there's a young uh, man that comes over from the Caribbean with his suitcase to London doesn't know anybody totally lost hasn't got any friends um, and the mechanicals in this summer night's dream you have the you know the comics the mechanicals so coincidentally they have the same names this is Frank Flute uh, Nick Bottom and uh, yeah it's um, it's interesting and Pete Quince so there are three mechanicals and they entertain the, the crowds you know outside yes. the uh, the theatre 
Uh, so they're the street entertainers, really. And Eros is the puck, if you will, that um, the Eros is, is that bit of magic that, that weaves throughout and is the narrator and tells you what's going on and weaves from person to person. So it's a bit, it's a bit like a Shakespearean soap in a way, but with characters from the early 1930s. Wonderful. It sounds like we have lots of little uh, stories running parallel with each other. Already, you're, you're drawing an audience in with that sort of kind of that heritage music as well. Um, he, mm. must be, uh, he must be very proud because he never did, like you say, write for stage, did he? No, he didn't. And uh, I think once people are here in the, in the theatre and they go, oh, yes, oh, I remember this. But initially, it's, it's a bit of a step getting them here to go oh yeah yeah maybe i remember that i don't know i think once they're in um it's interesting because when they did uh in town tonight uh famously on the radio then on tv where they interviewed anyone that was in town whether it was a flower seller or an american singer or you know member of the house of lords whoever was in town real mixture did it on the radio and then on tv uh they uh wanted a piece of music and before the show started, 20 minutes away from starting the first show on the radio, I said, we don't have a theme. I said, quick, run down the road to chapels and find yeah. something related to London. Yeah. So then he steamed down the road, got there in about five minutes, um, went through, what, what songs have you got? They go, Knightsbridge March. Go, That's London, isn't it? Yeah, we'll take that. We'll race back, <laughs> put it on literally five minutes before the show started. And I think Eric Coates' son, they were in the uh, flat in Baker Street, and he said, Dad, yeah. Dad, they're using your music. Yeah. And he said, brilliantly, now we'd say, fantastic. <laughs> I'm thrilled it could make me some money. I'm so delighted. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Coates said, well, it can't do any harm, can yeah. it? <laughs> what a wonderful throwaway line. What great music. I love that. Yeah, yeah. and the way that it's been brought together. Um, talking about the, the musical and the cast and the creatives that are linked to the production, we have some well-known names that are involved with the production. Who's directing uh, the musical? Yeah, Ray Shell is directing it. He's five guys named Mo, Starlight Express, The Bodyguard. Uh, Lee Payne is the choreographer, very, very talented, great tap dancer. Nice way of watching him with the people auditioning the other day. It's got a really nice way with him, it really brought them forward. And then when I listen to 15 people doing synchronized tap dancing <laughs> to one of my songs, you think, oh, this is Broadway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it's it. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah, it's absolute Broadway. Um, got Lee John from Imagination, yep. um, Peter Straker, who was in the original Hair, of course, Peter is brilliant. Yes. Um, uh, Andre Bernard, who was in uh, Any Fools and Horses, Gary Shell from Quadrophenia. Wonderful. So, yeah, we've got a lot of, um, a lot of good people. Yes, is... great, great feature. I'm already really excited to see this, and I, I think um, it, it's wonderful. It's good also to support new work, new material, um, new artists, because we are so fortunate that we... We do have a lot of choice in terms of theatre and production, but I think it's also very important to support mm. uh, new projects and new shows. So um, it goes on at the Isha Theatre as of April... What April the 25th to 29th, seven shows. Mm -hmm. You've already got your seat. If you uh -huh. just stay there <laughs> for a few weeks, no one will move you. <laughs> and maybe I'll have a few more people join me. <laughs> I'm sure. Let's hope they do. They don't have to lie along the seats. I'd rather have I'd rather have more people in the audience than on stage, to be honest. Yes. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think most people who are putting on a new production that would be very much the case, wouldn't it? Have it is. It audience. is a worry though. <laughs> you know, it's like having a party, yeah. and you said seven o'clock, and at half past seven, you're looking around the door yeah. Yeah. to see, you know, where the people with the pipkins and the firkins are, and the you know twiglets. Are they coming? I did say seven o'clock. Yes. You know, it, it's that as somebody said to me, you know, what, what's your role? I said, chewing my fingernails. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you won't be chewing your fingernails um, once the curtain rises on this production, Mike. I'm very, very excited about it. And we're going to do um, as much as we can to highlight that to all of our listeners, all of our followers. Um, I really look forward to seeing the production and I wish you all the very best. But absolutely congratulations, because I think it's one thing to have a, an idea and a passion for something to actually push forward and, and bring it to the stage and make it work so I know. It's, all it's, the very best it's holding your breath really <laughs> i mean it, it's um yeah it, and people always cry out for something new in the theater mm -hmm. and when you do they take a step back and go oh i don't know that i know west side story yeah. so you think you know you've got to it's like new music i mean yes. if, if somebody well known brings a song out people go oh yeah i'll go and buy that i know them if it's somebody brand new they go well, yeah. who's that then yeah. Well, I encourage everybody to go and see this production. Come and see this production because it's very important to support local theatre, 
repertoire theatre, new musicals, um, and particularly one of this uh, sort of nostalgia and creativity, and also to celebrate the wonderful music of Eric Coates as well. So what a wonderful uh, combination. Mike, thank you so much thank for you. giving up your time to thank chat you. with me today. Uh, really excited about it and uh, look forward to opening night. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>